we are honored you chose to be with us today. Um, God has always been a God who invites us into the relationship that he so desires to have with us. God has created human beings to be in relationship with him, though that relationship was broken uh, when the first man and the first woman was placed into the Garden of Eden and they stepped away and didn't trust God. The Bible says that this thing called sin, which literally means missing the mark of God's glorious standard, entered into the world. But ever since then, God has been pursuing humanity to come and see who he is so that we can all become who he has made us to be. And so we are glad that here in 2023, you have come to see who God is. He's a God who invites us all into this relationship. And how he would like for us to respond to his invitation of coming to see who he is is by faith, by, by trust, beginning to trust that he is who he says he is and he'll do what he says he will do because he's a God that can be trusted. But oftentimes we don't trust God because something has come into our life, broken that trust, and it wasn't God that broke that trust. It was a sin who entered the world that broke that trust. But God says, look, I am pursuing you so you can come back to me and we can be in this intimate relationship and I can begin to give you a download in who I've designed you to be. The Bible says this in Psalm 66, verse five. The psalmist wrote this, come and see what God has done, his awesome deeds for mankind. And so God has done some awesome things for mankind. And this was written before Christ was born. This was written before uh, the the death, burial, and resurrection and ascension of Jesus. But here the psalmist writes that we should all ex receive God's invitation and come and see the great things that he has done and the great things that he is going to do. The Bible says in John chapter 3, verse 16, that God gave his best so we can begin to understand who he is. It says it this way, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And so what we celebrate this weekend, Easter weekend, resurrection weekend, is, the, is basically the climax of God's great story that he reveals through Jesus Christ. God reveals through the cross of Christ that he is madly in love with humanity. God reveals through the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ that he is all powerful and he can help us overcome any struggle, any pain, any sin that ever comes into our heart and our life if we intimately put our faith in him and know, know who he is. And so that is God's grand invitation. The question is, is will you respond to Jesus, the one God sent to by faith and begin to trust him with your life and your heart? Because we believe he has created us to do the greater things. Now, I don't know how many of you um, have ever seen an instrument like this. And if you're kind of in the back of the room today, and far off, this is a magnifying glass, okay, in case you can't see it real close, but I can see you back there. But the first encounter I ever had with this, this particular instrument was in my grandmother's home. We called her Granny. And I would go to stay with Granny as a young kid, and oftentimes I would walk into the room or the kitchen table where Granny was sitting, and Granny would have an item like this out, basically reading a newspaper or a book or some sort of letter. And she would be looking through this glass and she would be kind of going along like that. And she would be looking at what, what it said in the newspaper or, you know what, in, in the book. And as I began to observe my Granny using this magnifying glass, I was just really curious about what she was seeing through that glass. And so I learned to pick it up and, and look at the, the words that she was looking at, the letters she was looking at. And what I discovered is 
is those letters, they were the same letters that I could see with, with my eye, but they were a lot larger than I could see with my eye. In other words, this, this magnified the letter, and as it magnified the letter, I could see the letter like I've never seen it before. It just got it so big and so, and, and so large. I could see the details of, of the letter. I could see the kind of the kind of ink and all kinds of stuff because it would, it would just empower the letter in such a way I could see all the details. Then as I grew older, I learned to take this same instrument and do kind of all kinds of incredible things. I, I learned that you could take a coin like this that I have in my hand and you could look closely at it and you could begin to see if it was like this coin and did it have any value? It, it, was it a, a coin that was a 1944 steel wheat coin that was worth $408,000? And I could observe through that and see if I had that coin in my hand. And so whenever we look through a magnifying glass, oftentimes we can see details. We can discover things of, of value. We can discover new things. Like you can examine something up close and begin to see how it works. You can begin to see how it operates. You can begin to see things about, about things like you've, you've never seen before and discover great things. But one of the greatest things I ever learned to do with a magnifying glass was to start a fire. Every young boy's dream is to start a fire with a magnifying glass. And the way we started that fire, in case you don't know, is the sun would shine intensely through the magnifying glass and then you would find just the right spot on some dry leaves or, or a dry piece of paper that would ignite and you'd find just the right spot and you would hold it where the beam of light would shine through it and it would shine intensely into this one spot that would begin to smolder. It would begin to smoke and as it began to smolder and smoke, you would just take your breath and you would begin to, to blow on it like this. And all of a sudden, it would burst into flames and a fire, a fire would start. And, you know, it, there was amazing things that was discovered as a kid when I held the magnifying glass. But what the scripture declares to us is Jesus is a lot like a magnifying glass. And, and the reason I say that is because the Bible says in Colossians chapter one, verse 15, that Jesus, he is the visible image of an invisible God. In other words, none of us have ever physically saw God with our eyes. But the Bible says Jesus is like a magnifying glass. He begins to put God up close he begins to put God very, very close so we can begin to discover some details, so we can see some things of value, so we can begin to, to understand some deeper things about who God is and, and who we are. And so Jesus comes into humanity and he's God in the flesh. He is God in the flesh revealing good things about God to us. And so today, what we're going to do is we're going to look at a passage of Scripture in John chapter 1, and we're going to see what the Bible says about this Jesus and how this Jesus interacts with, with a few people here in the Scriptures. Because the reality of it is, is the way Jesus interacts with these people in the Scriptures is the same way he interacts with every single one of us in this room. If we all so dare to have the faith that God is who he says he is and respond to his invitation by faith, then God will begin to do great, great things in our life and through our life. They may look different than what we ever thought they would look like, but God will begin to come alive inside of us and begin to do great things and mighty things. Let's look and see what the scripture says about this Jesus in John chapter one, beginning with verse one. 
you brought your Bible with you today, that's great. You can open it up. You can turn there. If you didn't bring a copy of God's Word with you today or you don't have it there on your phone, it's going to be on the screens, and so you can just follow along there. John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. It says this about, about God and Jesus. It says, in the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created, created everything through him and nothing was created except through him. Notice it's given the word word a pronoun. It's given the word word a he and a him and it says nothing was created except through him. The word gave life to everything that was created. And his life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness can never extinguish it. And so John continues to give an account of Jesus being a revelation from God to magnify who God is. This is what he goes on to say in John chapter one, verse 14. He says, so the word became human and he made his home among us. And he was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. The writer goes on to say, and we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. He continues on in John chapter one, verse 18, and he says, for no one has ever seen God. No one has never seen God, but the unique one who is God himself, he's near to the Father's heart. He has he has, this Jesus has, we know him today, this word has, as we know him today, who has become flesh and his name is Jesus. The Bible says he has revealed God to us. So Jesus is a lot like a magnifying glass. He's God in the flesh to bring God close to us as human beings. And God wanted to come close to us so we could come and see who he is and then discover who he says we are, and then begin to walk in the fullness of who he says we are and become all he's designed us to be. And so my friends, Easter is about God, you know what, coming to earth in the flesh and then showing his incredible love for humanity. The, the cross of Christ is a love sign. And it's a love sign to say, you know what, I love you in spite of you being stuck in life and not knowing who you are. You're stuck in sin. You stu you're stuck apart from me. But I love you so much, I'm going to give my one and only son life on a cross. And there's no greater love than that. And not only am I going to give his life on a cross so you can have an eternal relationship with me, I'm going to resurrect him from a grave so you can see my great and awesome power. And so Easter... It's an invitation from God to all of us here today. But as this word begins to reveal who Jesus is and people would begin to discover who Jesus is, what they would begin to do is they would begin to share who Jesus was with the people around them. And if you continue the story as the writer John is writing the story, he begins to talk about Jesus being revealed to, to people. And as soon as Jesus was revealed to people in this particular day, what they would do oftentimes is immediately go find somebody else and say, come and see who this Jesus is. And we continue the storyline and we see in the passage here in John 145, a little bit later on, a man named Philip, he discovered who Jesus was. He discovered who he was and he went to his friend Nathaniel and he told Nathaniel, he says, hey, come and see if this is really the Jesus that, that, that we're, we're looking for. Is it really the Christ that we're, we're looking for? And, and so what happens is Nathaniel comes to Jesus and we're going to look at this story today. But when Nathaniel come to Jesus, what Jesus reveals to Nathaniel is what he wants to reveal to all of us today for us to begin to live fully like he desires for us to live. And so the way Jesus reveals himself in this story in John 145 is the same way he begins to reveal himself to us sitting in this room today. It will begin to 
trust God by faith. So let's look at this story beginning with John 1.45 and see this encounter he had with this man named Nathaniel. The Bible says that Philip, he found Nathaniel and he told him, we have found the one that Moses wrote about in the law and about whom the prophets also wrote. His name is Jesus of Nazareth. He's the son of Joseph. Nazareth, can anything good come from there? Nathaniel asked Philip. And so Philip says, well, why don't you just come and see? Why don't you just come and see? Nathaniel is not from Nazareth, but Nathaniel begins to think anybody from Nazareth is not good enough to be who he thinks that they should be or who Philip says this is to be. And so when Jesus saw Nathanael approaching him, he said to Nathanael, here truly is an Israelite in whom there is, there is no deceit. And then Nathanael responds to Jesus. How do you know me, Nathanael asked. Maybe that's the question you're asking today. How does God know anything about you? How does he know where you've been? And what you're doing. How does he know the condition of your heart right now? Nathaniel asked Jesus, he says, how do you know me? And Jesus answered, well, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. And then Nathaniel declared, hey, rabbi, which means teacher, you are the son of God, you are the king of Israel. Jesus said to Nathaniel, you believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree. You will see greater things than that, Nathaniel. And then he added, he added at the end of all of this dialogue, he says, very, tru very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven open and angels of God ascending and descending on who you just declared me to be, on the Son of Man. And, and so this encounter that Jesus has with Nathaniel begins to, begins to bring God up close and personal into Nathaniel's life, and it also is the way that God becomes up close and personable in, in our own life. And, and, and so what Jesus, or what Nathaniel first does when Jesus comes to see him, he, he begins to, to look at Jesus, and, and Jesus begins to, to talk to him. But what, what Jesus begins to do in Nathaniel is to, is to identify who Nathaniel is before before. Nathaniel ever even understood who Jesus was. In other words, Jesus tells Nathaniel, you know what? I saw you before you ever saw me. In other words, I, I knew who you were when, when you were sitting under a fig tree and I knew every thought you were having when you were under that fig tree. And I, I, I knew you were sitting there reading probably the scriptures, reading about a man named Jacob in the Old Testament whose name I changed to Israel. You were sitting there contemplating all of that, uh, Nathaniel. And as you were sitting there under that fig tree and you were thinking these thoughts, I knew who you were. And, and so what God wants, to, want us, wants us to understand is when he magnifies who he is to us, most of the time he will come to us and help us see where we are and see the condition of our own heart. In other words, God, God will read your mail. And, and God read Nathaniel's mail. He knew exactly who he was and what he was doing before Nathaniel ever made his way to see Jesus. The Bible says God knit you together in your mother's womb. He foreknew you before you were ever born. God knew every step you would take, every mistake you would make. He knew every thought you would have. But God still invites you to come and see no matter what condition you're in. He saw Nathaniel for who he was. But he said, Nathaniel, you know what? You're not gonna always stay that way. I'm gonna do greater things through your life. But he had to first understand where he was in order to step into this relationship with Jesus and for Jesus to begin to take him on a journey to build him into all he, could, he was created to be. And so what 
what Jesus does is he reads Nathaniel's mail and he knows every thought he has and he knows every thought you and I have and he came to Nathaniel and he'll come to you and me too. In other words, right now, you know what? God knows what you're thinking. Now I don't, but God knows that some of you are sitting there thinking about, you know what, I, I need a nap because <laughs> I stayed up late last night. God knows some of you are thinking, I don't like that shirt that, that guy on stage has on. <laughs> he knows you're thinking that. God knows some of you are thinking about getting out of here and going to eat lunch. He knows that. God also knows that there's somebody in here today that's praying for someone and been praying for someone for years for them to come and see who Jesus is. And he knows that person got in this room today and he knows that too. See, see, God knows exactly where you are. God knows where I am. I, I, I remember God beginning to read my mail back in the day and, and I was in a broken place and maybe that's where you are today. But I remember I was in this broken place. I tried to discover all kinds of things about who I was and, and God came to me and he met me in that broken place. Isn't it amazing how we can sit in a room like this and think we can hide our thoughts and our heart from God. But see, God don't want you to hide your heart. God wants to reveal to you where your heart is so he can step into your life and when he steps into your life and you begin to trust him, he can begin to pick you up and take you to where you need to be. In other words, God will reveal to every single one of us in this room today that we are a sinner in need of a savior. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. But see, the enemy will begin to read your mail and begin to define where you are and he'll begin to say something else different to you. He'll begin to condemn you. Know that Jesus never wants you to see where you are to condemn you. But he always wants you to see where you are he, so he can speak into your heart and he can speak into your life and you can become all God has created you to be. The Bible says this in Romans chapter 5, verse 8. It says, for God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. The Bible says in John chapter three, verse 17, that God didn't send Jesus into the world the first time. He didn't send him into the world to judge the world, but to save the world through him. And so in other words, Jesus begins to read your mail to not just define, you know what, how, how awful you are and how awful things are, though he will define that. And he, will, he, will, he will reveal all these things these things to you, but he'll begin to tell you where you are so you can begin to basically see who he is and begin to recognize you have a need in your life. See, Nathaniel had to first know that Jesus knew him. And then Jesus said, I know who you are. And then what Nathaniel responds with is this. He says, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. And Jesus says, you believe because I told you, I saw you under the fig tree. The next thing that God will always do is after he reveals to you exactly where you are, he'll begin to magnify who he is to your heart so you can begin to put, put your trust in him. Notice that Jesus doesn't deny, deny what Nathaniel just said. You are the son of God and you are the king of Israel. But I want to make a little side note right here. Is in this particular writing, the cross of Christ hasn't happened yet. This is before Jesus goes to the cross. This is before he's nailed to a cross. This is before he resurrected from a grave. This is before he ascended back to heaven. You and I, we have greater revelation of God today through the cross of Christ and the resurrection of Jesus. We have a greater revelation than Nathaniel had in this particular day. In other words, he didn't know everything about God. And the truth of the matter is you and I don't know everything about God either. But the parts about God that we know 
today is the parts we're to put our faith in so that we can begin to trust him to fulfill all of his promises so we can have a hope in the future. See, what, what God has revealed to us by coming to that cross and giving his life on that cross is, is it was an expression of God's amazing love. What the resurrection expresses is that God is bigger than any struggle or any challenge that you may have in your life. If he can resurrect from the dead in a cruel Roman cross, I can promise you today, he can resurrect your situation and help you in your struggle. But Nathaniel begins to recognize who he is. Again, what God is asking when he shows this great love and he resurrects from the grave, he's saying, will you trust me for life instead of all the other things you've been trusting for life? I've come and I've resurrected and I've defeated death. And Jesus is, is the visible image of an invisible God. He's God in the flesh, making an expression to us that God wants a relationship with us. And my friend, God is inviting every single one of us in this room to step into that relationship, no matter what our past is. The Bible says he gave his life on that cross once and for all, all sin everywhere if we'll trust in him and believe in him. He resurrected from a grave to show God's amazing power and that same power that brought him out of the grave. The Bible says is available to everyone from the front of this room to the back of this room, all of you sitting online and everybody in the overflow. It's available, but we have to trust God is who he is. And the question is, is God revealing that he is the one, that he's bigger than any challenge you may have? And are you gonna put your faith in what Jesus magnified that first Easter weekend when he gave his life on a cross and he come back from the grave? You know, when, when those ladies went to the grave, they found out the grave was empty. And whenever they found out the grave was empty, they, they began to go and share and invite some of those who had been following Jesus to come and see that he wasn't there anymore. And, and what God has been doing throughout history is he's invited people to come and see that he conquered death. Do you know that people's been trying to find the body of Jesus ever since he died and resurrected 2,000 years ago? But I'm here to declare to you today, he is not there. He has risen and he has ascended into heaven. But the question is, do you believe? But the reason he did it was to bring you in right relationship with him. Because the moment you believe that, my friend, by faith, the Bible says that God sends his spirit to come live in you and his spirit will begin to be the one that reveals more and more truth to you. And so God's inviting all of us to see greater things. He told Nathaniel in this passage not only who he used to be, he doesn't tell Nathaniel only who he is, he begins to reveal to Nathaniel, Nathaniel, you're gonna see greater things. And my friend, he wants to reveal that to every single person underneath the sound of my voice today. You can see greater things with God's empowerment in your life. But he wrote it this way in John chapter one, verse 50, it says this, Jesus said, you believe because I told you, I saw you under the fig tree. He tells, he tells uh, Nathaniel, he will see greater things. A little bit later in John 14, 12, he tells the disciples, he says, I tell you the truth, anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done, even greater works because I am going to be with the Father. So in other words, what, what Jesus is saying is I, I'm, I'm prepared to come into your life, empower your life with the Holy Spirit so you can do even greater things than you, you have seen me do. 
But what, what he's also saying is, you know what, you, you gotta be willing to, to say goodbye to a few things in order to say hello to this new life. The Bible says we're to repent of our sin and turn our heart towards God. We're to turn away from, from saying, God, you know what, I, I, I'm, I'm tired of living life without purpose, without a future, and I wanna turn away from that, and I wanna turn my heart, and I wanna trust you by faith that you are who you say you are, and you have done what you said you would do, uh, would do and you're gonna continue to do what you said you would do. The Bible says when we turn our heart towards Jesus by faith, we can begin to experience God in our life. We can begin to say hello to a few things. We can say hello to peace. We can say hello to joy. We can say hello to hope. We can say hello to strength because the Holy Spirit of God will begin to give us all of these things to help us through life's struggles. The Holy Spirit of God will carry us through to the other side. He is the one that will come and teach you and coach you and guide you all the days of your life. God said he'll send him so you can do greater things. But the question is, do you have the heart and faith to believe that God is who he says he is and Jesus came to die for your sin, die for my sin, and you put your faith in a resurrected Jesus so that spirit comes and indwells in you? But my friend, what, what you got to do when the Spirit indwells, the Spirit's going to encourage you and the Spirit's going to say, you need to start saying goodbye to a couple of things. You need to say goodbye to fear. You need to say goodbye to anger. You need to say goodbye to bitterness. You need to say goodbye to jealousy. You need to get, say goodbye to hatred because I come to give you life so you can say hello to peace, so you can say hello to love, so you can say hello to joy, so you can say hello to hope, so you can say hello to strength. And my friend, I need you to know that God is here and he wants to do greater things through you, but will you receive? Respond by faith this Easter weekend. So here's how we're setting this up today. I want to give you the opportunity to respond to what God's doing in your heart. All over this room, online, in overflow. There's a couple of crosses in this room down here in the front. There's buttons online and there's a cross out in the overflow. But my friend, if God is speaking to your heart, in just a moment, we're gonna sing a song together. And when you hear the voices of that song, I'm gonna invite you to make a move towards the crosses up here in the front of the stage, if you're in the room. And at the foot of the crosses, there's gonna be some people there that are gonna hand you this little magnifying glass. In all honesty, this magnifying glass will do nothing in your life, but it will serve as a reminder that today, Easter 2023, you put your faith in God's great invitation of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus and God become magnified in your life. And when you walk away and you put this in your hand, always remember God's got you and he's gonna do greater things. Hold on to God by faith. And so what we're gonna do is gonna allow you to physically respond to the crosses, pick up the magnifying glass, and simply go back to your seat. But I'm gonna ask if we would, all over this room, just would we stand to our feet as we pray together today? And then when we begin to sing this song, I'm gonna invite you just to move to the crosses and respond to what God's doing in your heart. Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for coming to earth for leaving heaven and coming here so we could begin to see God's heart. So we could begin to understand that no matter where we've been, God is madly in love with us that he would give his life on a cross so that we could be reconnected to him. Jesus, we thank you for taking on the sin of the world. We thank you, Jesus, for given your life for each and every one of us on that cross and we trust that by faith today. Jesus, we trust that you resurrected from a grave and the same power that brought you out of that grave is available to us. God, we're gonna receive it today by faith. And my friend, you know what? If you're sitting in your seat 
and you need to turn from your sin, just say, God, I want to say goodbye to some things. I want to turn away from whatever it is you need to turn away from, and I want to turn my heart towards you. Maybe today God is saying, you know what? You need to say goodbye to certain things. You may need to say goodbye to fear. It may be anger. It may be jealousy. It may be pride. It may be hatred. But God is saying today, would you say yes to me by faith and begin to say hello to hope, hello to peace, hello to love, hello to these great things. And my friend, if you need to make that decision today, would you move by faith and do what God is nudging your heart to do? We come to you, Jesus. We pray this holy prayer in your mighty name. Jesus, we love you. Amen.